Honey, I think it's time that we cover a video about the Henry Ford Museum. What do you think? It'd be nice if we could go there. Oh, wait. Hello there, pair of peeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. I'm your co-host, Mary Ann Donnelly. We are here today at the Henry Ford Museum. And if you can see behind us, probably not. Oh, I focused. There we go. Uh, that's one of the cool paintings here. Um, so we're going to be here all day long. This video may be long. <laughs> but we had some cool stuff to share with you. So let's get on with it. But before we get into that, <laughs> if you're into the paranormal history, forensic, and travel type videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ding that little bell so you'll hear from us next time. We All right, no more joking around. Let's go. Ford had developed from a farm boy with a mechanical mind into one of the world's most powerful and wealthy industrialists. He and his wife Clara never forgot the values of the rural life that they had left behind. As the inventor of the Model T and champion of the assembly line, Henry Ford was aware of the changes that the automobile and growing industrialization could and would bring to the way of life in rural America. Collecting the tangible evidence of America's pre- and early industrial history eventually became Henry Ford's passion. In the early 1900s, he began accumulating items associated with his lifelong hero, Thomas Edison. He started storing a few miscellaneous items picked up through the years in a sparse office at the Ford Motor Company's Highland Park plant as early as 1906. By the 1910s, the clocks and watches he had loved tinkering with and repairing since childhood days had grown into a collection. He also accumulated many other artifacts, along with the inventions and tools that he felt exemplified ordinary Americans' day-to-day -day lives. In 1916, the Chicago Tribune printed a series of three articles based on interviews with Henry Ford, calling Ford an anarchist and an ignorant idealist. Ford sued for liable for $1 million, with the case coming to trial in Mount Clemens, Michigan in 1919. In one of the original articles, the Tribune quoted Ford as saying, history is more or less bunk. During the trial, the defense attorneys, trying to prove Ford's ignorance, quizzed him on this statement and Ford responded with, I did not say it was bunk. It was bunk to me. I did not say... Dot, dot, dot. What you could say is Henry Ford never really believed that history is bunk. He believed that the kind of history taught in schools, the history that emphasized kings and generals, and omitted ordinary folks and the tools of everyday life was useless. He told his secretary, Ernest Leibold, on the way home from the trial, we're going to start something. I'm going to start up a museum and give people a true picture of the development of the country. That's the only history that's worth observing, that you can preserve yourself. We're going to build a museum that's going to show industrial history and it won't be bunk. We'll show the people what actually existed in years gone by, and we'll show the actual development of American history from the early days, from the earliest days that we can recollect up until the present day. After more than 10 years of collecting, planning, and finally building his dream, the Edison Institute, the original name of the Henry Ford, opened October 21st of 1929. Henry Ford dedicated this institution to his friend Thomas Edison and celebrated with grand opening known as Light's Golden Jubilee in honor of the 50th anniversary of his invention of the electric light. Henry Ford created a remarkable collection that tells stories of ordinary and extraordinary people. Some of these people and their ideas changed our lives. Today, the museum's collections both honor and build upon Henry Ford's legacy.
so much cool stuff here. I don't know how we're gonna put this all in the video. I don't know, dear. A lot we'll of stuff. Ah, we'll make it work.
directly, straight up. This is Roger Allen reporting for WWJ Radio 950. July 5th, 1937, and Amelia Earhart is missing. Somewhere in the Pacific, faint radio signals from her airplane were heard. But several days have passed since a trace of the daring pilot or her navigator, Fred Noonan, has been seen or heard. Authorities... Arnold letter. Isn't it the Arnold letter? 
yeah, you know, the traitor Benedict Arnold. This is the letter that made him.
I don't stay there the whole time, but it turns them on. I'm looking for a button to turn on the light bulb machine here. Let's see if we can find it. Digs? Yeah, I don't know. They let me, let me walk out with them? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. No? no. Alright, well, let's go take a look.
Yes, thank you for including me in this video, as I do have some paranormal claims about the museum. As with most museums that contain antique and older artifacts, there are paranormal claims that could be attachments to these items. Employees have reported hearing footsteps late at night when nobody is around and the building is supposed to be closed for the night. Others have reported feeling cold spots as they walk through the building. There are two very important claims that have to be mentioned about this museum. One is that of people witnessing President Abraham Lincoln actually sitting and rocking in the chair in which he was assassinated. And there was another guest who reported seeing a man standing next to the Kennedy assassination car when the man turned to him and said there was more than one shooter and then disappeared. All right, a lot of cool stuff in there. There's so much in there. It's gonna be a long one. But if you guys wanna see more, Marianne took oh, probably thousands of pictures. Uh, ourhauntedtravels.com, you can go check it out. We'll have associated blog post with additional pictures and all kinds of stuff over there. Anything else you'd like to add to this video? I don't know how you can possibly see everything. I like, we walk every aisle, but I know yeah. there's stuff I missed. So yeah. yeah, you can spend a lot of time in here. All right, so stay tuned for part two. We're gonna do the village next. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. All right, till next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, Support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting. <laughs>